Hello, welcome to another weekly reading vlog. We are entering into week three of Spookathon. I am well and truly into the spooky spirit, spooky season reading era. I don't know. I feel like it's my horror era at the moment. I'm definitely reading a lot of books that are giving me the creepy feelings, books that are kind of making me feel completely gripped and compelled to keep going and I am here for it. So the book that I'm going to be reading for the start of this week is The Nesting by CJ Cook. So if you watched last week's vlog this is pretty much taking off where that vlog ended. I haven't really read a great deal more of this. So I'm about 135 pages into this book. This is a horror story following a woman who fakes her CV to get a nanny job to go live in Norway for seven months with this family and look after their two daughters and she moves over to Norway and realises there's some rather strange things happening that really shouldn't be going on and there's some kind of haunted element to it. So I'm really liking this one so far. The haunting elements have been slowly being fed into the story already which I'm really liking. So I'm intrigued to see where this goes. I think that it's going to be quite creepy as it gets further into it. One of the things I've been saying as I've been reading this is that one of the reviews said it's best read with the lights on, which I mean I'm definitely going to read it with the lights on, definitely, <laughs> but that's definitely setting this up for that kind of horror, creepy, scary atmosphere, which is what I want. I want a book to scare me, hopefully. I may regret saying that, but that is the goal for this one. So that is my physical read. My audiobook read is Fairy Tale by Stephen King. I am this far through, uh, that far, that far through. I am enjoying this. The main character is very wholesome, very good guy. I know there's gonna be like a fantasy element coming further into this. It hasn't really hit at the moment, but initially this follows a young guy who is helping out this old man who has had a fall and hurt himself and he's helping him out looking after his dog and there is a fantasy world in this man's shed. <laughs> so that's where we're going here. I think this is more fantasy than horror but I'm really enjoying it. I think that there have been a couple of moments where I think it could go down a horror fantasy route with the type of creatures that are in this fantasy world but we haven't really poked enough at that yet which I do need to see. It's definitely very slow but as I'm listening to it as an audiobook I don't mind so much because it's just feeding into the atmosphere. So these are the two books that I'm currently reading. If I can finish both of these, or especially this one, I would like to move on to Reprieve. Completely forgotten the name of the author, I don't have the book with me, but that is my Patreon book club pick at the moment. And I would definitely like to read that one because it's definitely perfect for spooky season. So once I finish the nesting, I will move on to that. Last week I tried to create a really cozy autumnal vlog. Hopefully you have enjoyed watching that. If you have watched it, if you haven't, then I'll, I'll pop it up here. But I really want to be able to do the same for this vlog. I am really enjoying watching the very atmospheric autumnal content at the moment. It just makes me feel very calm and very cozy. So hopefully this could be another cozy autumnal spooky themed with these books reading vlog. I am in my family home at the moment as you can probably tell. I'm heading back to my flat on Wednesday but tomorrow night I have the Carrie Soto Taylor Jenkins Reed event in Bath which I'm really excited for so after that I will then be heading back to my flat on Wednesday. <laughs> It is Tuesday after work and I am about to head to Bath for the Taylor Jenkins read event tonight. Really looking forward to it. I will of course be taking you along with me but just wanted to pop in and give a quick update. I haven't really read too much more of the nesting however there's a basement, there's something really creepy happening in the basement and I just I don't know why people can't leave the basement alone like there's definitely something weird happening so it's good, it's creepy, I'm really liking it. Really looking forward to the event tonight. This is a very quick update because I need to leave but let's go to Bath. It is 
Wednesday, it's Wednesday, <laughs> it's Wednesday afternoon, back at my flat, just about to stream Dreamlight Valley, I have the new update, I'm very excited, but I just wanted to drop in quickly because I haven't spoken to you yet today, but hi, the Bath event yesterday, the Taylor Jenkins Reid event was fantastic, hearing Taylor Jenkins Reid speak about their writing, it just, it makes me feel so excited hearing the passion the authors have for their work, I mean obviously authors are going to have a passion for their books because they have created the world, but I just love hearing what was going on with all the decision making, the writing process, and just, yeah, it just made me very, very excited and even more appreciative of these books. So that was really good fun. It was really cool to hang out with some friends, to meet some new friends. I had a really good time. I haven't read much more of The Nesting yet, but it's still definitely very creepy. So I'm gonna be reading more on sprints later tonight with Spoops and Rose. So I'm excited to do that. I feel like even though I will be alone in my flat, I'll have company reading it because I'm on sprints, so that helps because I definitely think we're about to enter proper creepy territory, so that's where we're at the nesting. And now I'm about to go live with Dreamlight Valley, so I have a busy afternoon, but hopefully lots of reading to be done and a new Dreamlight Valley update. Good afternoon. It is Thursday. I have some reading sprints coming up very shortly after work and I will be trying to finish the nesting on those sprints. I am currently about 150 pages towards the end of this book, very much anticipating how the end journey is going to take here. There's this haunted element throughout this book, it's definitely quite creepy, and it's centering around two different characters. I'm intrigued to know if it is a haunted element or if it's more hallucinations, so I don't know if this is paranormal, supernatural type of book, or if it's just hallucinations from the characters that it's happening to, so I'm intrigued to see what direction it takes there. If you are looking for a psychological horror that gives you those tingly, goosebumpy feelings, has really decent pacing, interesting characters with interesting character development about them, I would definitely recommend this. I am really, really liking it. I'm really excited to see where this ends. As I said, I'm going to try and finish this on sprints. I don't know if that's realistic or not because I don't want to rush it, but it's very addictive and when I'm reading it I feel like I am literally falling into the book. I haven't listened to too much more of Fairy Tale yet by Stephen King. I do want to sit down and read more of that because I was really enjoying it, but I've been listening to a lot of music at the moment whenever I've had my headphones on instead of an audiobook, so I do need to try and read a little bit more of that. I have finished reading The Nesting. I really really liked reading this. It was very tense, very atmospheric, very mysterious. It had some great characters in it, great character development. Our main character, I feel like, went through a hell of a lot in this book and really grew as a person in this book, and I just loved it for so many reasons. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. I've been on sprints for about four hours now. I also made dinner and, like, made a batch portion of dinners and ate dinner and then read for like the last two or three sprints. So yes, I have managed to finish this. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to inadvertently spoil it because I think the mystery of this plot is a big part of what makes it addictive and a compelling read, but it's incredibly atmospheric and beautiful and haunting. I would say it wasn't overly scary. It does say that it is in the reviews. I think I've mentioned that one of the reasons I was well, not one of the reasons, but like something that was appealing to me was that it said that it was best read with the lights on. There was a couple of bits that did freak me out, as I've mentioned this vlog, there was a couple of moments. However, I thought they would get more intense and more creepy, and they didn't. So it did have scary moments. However, it wasn't that scary. It was more suggestive and mysterious. And I think the intrigue and that element of it was being built up and was the thing that compelled me to keep going with it and the thing that completely hooked me in and that was what I was really enjoying so I really liked this 
gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. And yeah, I think it's definitely a great horror and certainly edging into a gothic horror, I think the atmosphere and the the way the story unfolds, it's not slow, I will say that. The narrative certainly did move itself along, it doesn't have the slowness that a gothic horror has, but it it definitely felt atmospheric and had the kind of some of the themes of a gothic horror. But yes, generally really like this one. So I was going to go for Reprieve next. This is my Patreon book club pick at the moment, but I'm actually going to wait to read this one until I have read what I'm actually going to read next. So this one I'm really excited to read, but I want to read one more book first because I think it will fit really well into the Spoopathon prompts for this week. But also, can we just appreciate these edges? They look so cool. So this one I will be getting to probably in this vlog, but the next book I'm going to read is Hex. I'm really excited to read this one. I bought this one when I was in the Isle of Mull. It's set in Scotland during the 1500s. I don't know too much about it. This fits quite a few Spoopathon prompts and it's also quite small, so I think I could probably maybe finish this tonight. I still have a couple of hours of sprints left, so I definitely think I can... I'm pretty sure I'll be able to finish it, but if I can't finish it, I'm pretty sure that I can make a decent dent in it. Don't really know much about this. I assume there's some kind of witchcraft element to it, hence the hex part of it. I think it's feministy as well. I don't really know too much what to expect. So I thought I'd give this one a go because it's quite small. It has a lot of the prompts for Spoopathon for this wave, wave three. And I just thought it would lend itself to sprints this evening because it's quite a small read. So that is my reading updates. I'm going to get back to sprinting now. We have 12 minutes left of the sprint, so I'm going to start Hex. And I will either update you later tonight or tomorrow with my thoughts. Okay, I just finished Hex. Definitely a very quick read. A very heavy read in terms of subject matter. Was not an easy book to get through because of the trauma that the main character is experiencing in this book. This follows a woman in the 1500s who is waiting to be hanged because people believe she's a witch and she has, is going through the process of this wait whilst somebody from the future or her future has, as in the future to her, I think modern day for us, has come back to talk to her and kind of guide her in a way through this really horrible time. So this character is taking the form of a crow and there's a conversation happening between our main character and this crow. It's very prevalent that these two women, whilst being from different times, have still got the same issues and the same reasons behind things happening for the treatment of women. And in that sense, this is a rather sadly timeless story. I hate to think that someone could read this in a hundred years if our planet is still here in a hundred years, but I hate to think that if someone read this in a hundred years, it would still feel relevant to them. But I feel like it would, which makes this really sad. And seeing the trauma that she's going through and the point of her, like the getting to the point of her execution was really difficult to read about and how open and honest this character was about that process and her own fear and how essentially just being a woman who wanted to help people has led her to this point because of the men that have put her there. The more I talk about it, the more I realise how powerful it was. I gave it four out of five stars because I think it was an excellent story and the oh, story doesn't even seem right. I think it was brilliantly written and it was completely cleverly done in a way that it was a story, but it was still telling us something very real that has happened and is still happening in different forms. It didn't quite broach the five stars for me, but I do think this is really fantastic and an important read. And again, sadly timeless. It's, yeah, it's it's something that's been happening for a long time and whilst it's changed its form, it is still something that happens. But yeah, I read Hex. It was definitely a heavy read for such a short book. And I think if you are worried by the kind of trauma that this character goes through, I would just check the trigger warnings for this because the end became a little bit more unpleasant, I would say, and was definitely very, very dark. In fact, a lot of this book was very dark in places. But I think sometimes you do need something to be dark to shed light on something that is really important to talk about. So this is now my ninth book of the month. I don't really know how I've done this, but Spoopathon has given me the energy I've got out of my reading slump that I was in last month now and I am tearing through all the books. The sprints are definitely helping as well. So this is my ninth read. Ninth? Eighth? Ninth? No, I think it is my ninth read. And I will now, well not right now, I'm going to get ready for bed and then I will start Reprieve. 
You know the odd day when it just relentlessly rains? It has been doing this all day and I'm kind of here for it today. I don't mind because I don't have to go out so it's all cozy, but like look how dark it is in here. Normally when it rains, it rains for about an hour and then it stops and then it's like bright skies and it's just a contrast of weathers, but yeah. It's very, very dark. I know I could put the lights on, but I'm not in this room at the moment. I just wanted to show you that it's atmospherically rainy. Also, whilst we're here, I have started Reprieve and I am enjoying it. I'm only about 30 pages in, but we are instantly seeing the perspective of one of the characters who has witnessed this crime. Liking it so far, intrigued to see how it continues, but it is quite an addictive writing style at the moment. Also, it's just gone off to work on Friday. I'm about to stream some Dreamlight Valley. It's rainy outside. It's a perfect cozy game. I just watched the film Old. Oh, it was really good. It was a very interesting horror in which some people get trapped on an island where time is going a lot quicker. Sorry, the light's really bad, isn't it? It's reflecting on my TV. Time's going a lot quicker and they are all trapped on this island, essentially getting older and older and older. And some of them are children when they arrive on this island. Some of them are already quite elderly. Ah, uh, it was really good. If you want, it's, it is a horror, but like if you want a kind of psychologically strange film that has elements of horror but not in like a scary way like or the typical scary way I suppose I would definitely recommend it I think the fear element comes from this idea of getting older without experiencing your life on the journey to getting older and how it's actually pretty terrifying and the way that our bodies change and our minds change Oh, it was really good, really good. I can see why people wouldn't like it because I know that it's had some mixed reviews. I can definitely see why people wouldn't because it's a bit cliche at times with the roles of the people on the island and the way that people react to things, but I thought it was good. I gave it four out of five stars and I'm still thinking about it. There was a kind of moral element to it as well. It was, yeah, it was good, it was good. <laughs> Good morning, it is Saturday and I am about to go for a nice walk into town. I'm going to take a scenic route into town. I bought my book with me so I might try and find somewhere to read. Not necessarily on the way because it's pretty wet outside. I mean it was raining all day yesterday, it's sunny today. But I might try and stop somewhere to read for a little bit. I also have an order that I've been meaning to pick up in Waterstone so I need to grab that and I will show you what it is. I don't have any big plans really for today. I might do a stream later, I'm not really sure. But I'm going to get a lot of reading done tomorrow. Currently reading Reprieve still, enjoying it, haven't really made too much of a dent in it yet so I'm hoping I can do that a little bit today and then mostly tomorrow so that is it's kind of the weekend plan. picked up the book that I have been saying I've been meaning to pick up for a while. I was meant to pick this book up last week and I think I mentioned it in last week's vlog so if you're wondering what that book was this is the same book. I was meant to get it last week but the edition that arrived was really damaged and it's quite a nice pretty hardback so they ordered me through another one and it is here. So this is The Resurrectionist and this is by E. B. Hudspeth. This is both a non-fiction and fiction blurred together I think. I know that Cody and Ashley have both spoken about this book, that is where I heard about it and I think it sounds very very interesting and something a little bit different. This is all about the works of Dr Spencer Black who was a real person and this is a merging of a fictional biography of Dr Spencer Black 
from a childhood spent exhuming corpses through his medical training, his travels with carnivals, and the mysterious disappearance at the end of his life. And then the second half of this book is his magnum opus. It's the Codex Extinct Animalia, a Grey's Anatomy for Mythological Beasts. So it's kind of two books in one, but this is all following the hypothesis of this man, Dr. Spencer Black, and the hypothesis that he had was what if the world's, the world's most celebrated mythological beasts were in fact the evolutionary ancestors of humankind, which I think is a very interesting concept to look into within this book. So there's illustrations here that demonstrate what this is going to be talking about. So for example here is a page on the Minotaur and yeah the, there's illustrations in here, there's a kind of breakdown of all the different bones and how this all links to humankind. I think it sounds very interesting, a bit different and it's just also a very visually interesting book. I don't have anything like this on my shelves so I thought it would be quite a fun one to read especially at this time of year. So that was my thrilling town trip. I had a nice walk as well. It was nice and autumnal and I stopped in a cafe. I read more of Reprieve. I have actually read a decent chunk of it now so at the moment I expected, I thought, I'm gonna actually articulate my thoughts soon. <laughs> I expected this book to be different to what it is but I don't mean that in a bad way. What I knew about this book was that it was following an escape room on its last trial and somebody is killed in that trial and it examines the lives of all the people that were also in that room and like looks at their backstory. I knew it was more literary than it was like a thriller type of thing. Initially I kind of got the thriller vibe from it but it isn't really that. It's more of a kind of an examination of society and looking at different cultures and how these people have all come together. So at the moment we're just meeting each of the individual people and we haven't really seen what has happened in the present day to, to go towards this murder in the escape room. So we're kind of meeting them without the basis of information as to where they end up, which is interesting because from reading the blurb, we get more information than we do from the actual start of the book about the end situation. So it's an interesting structure to read the book in, especially having read the blurb and seeing what that talks about. So I'm definitely keen to keep going with it. Like I'm enjoying it just because it's different doesn't mean I'm not enjoying it. It's just definitely, not what I was expecting from it, but I kind of felt prepped for that as well because this is my Patreon book club pick and a lot of my patrons have already started this and have said something similar. So I was kind of ready for it not to be exactly what I thought it would be. But at the moment it feels like little short stories woven in that I assume are all gonna come together. I don't know if it's like gonna be Love Actually style and they're all gonna do some weave. That's what this is, this is weaving. <laughs> I don't really know what direction it's gonna take, but I'm along for the ride, I'm about page 100 now, so I definitely did sit down and read quite a lot in the cafe earlier. I'm gonna stream Disney Dreamlight Valley now because obviously I'm still addicted to that game. That's the plan for the rest of the day. I don't even know what time it is. It's currently, it's nearly three. I might watch, do you know what? I really wanna rewatch American Horror Story Coven. I love American Horror Story. I'd need to finish the most recent series of it as well, but I really wanna rewatch Coven because I just feel like that's perfect for this time of year. And I wanna watch this new show on Netflix. Is it called The Watcher? The, wa the Watch, The Watch, The Watcher, I think it's called. I've heard some interesting things about that, so I watch that as well. Generally, there's lots of good TV coming out at the moment, lots of good films. I'm just in the mood for all of the spooky season stuff. I'm definitely gonna essentially expand spooky season for me into November as well, because I feel like there's too much pressure to read everything and watch everything in the space of one month. And I always do read a lot in October, but there's so much more I want to read and I don't like putting the restriction on myself of like, oh, but I've saved this for October, so, I'm going to kind of expand out to November and obviously throughout the year as well because I think what I have learned so far from this month is that I am really enjoying reading more horror books and I would like to continue doing that. If you do have any horror recommendations for me please let me know in the comments because I'm definitely up for some creepy ones. I think I definitely prefer more of a thriller horror than I do a literary horror. I like gothic horror definitely but I need the horror to be fast paced with atmospheric kind of merged together. I think I'm gonna be going to Oxford next weekend, maybe. I'm hoping I can do like a little Halloween reading vlog weekend thing. I have Halloween off, which is really <laughs> convenient. So I'm hoping to do some kind of vlog there, but might pick up some horror books whilst I'm in Oxford. More bookshops need to have a dedicated horror section. I know that most are woven in with the fantasy section, but I want to see the horror books like in one place. So I'm, I'd like that in more bookshops, but I think Oxford has a couple with that kind of divide. So that's that's not happening until next week. The plan for right now is to go stream. I love that whenever I film at this spot, Pikachu's ass comes as like an obligatory extra in any of these angles. Okay, it's Sunday. I am making progress with Reprieve. I am here. I'm liking it. We have had a bit more of the escape room element, which 
it's like an extreme escape room. Like it's a horror escape room type environment that you get like a massive cash prize for winning. It sounds incredibly intense. Like I don't know if I would want to do it. There's some really creepy actors in the escape room that I feel like even though I'd know they'd be actors, I would just be like, hmm, hmm. And I think I'd probably end up getting really mad and being like, look, just stop it. I know you're acting. And I just ruin the whole thing. So I don't know if I would want to take part in this escape room. I've never done an escape room. I'd really like to. Anyway, off topic. We are returning to some characters as well, which is good because I didn't know how many characters we were going to get told about with their backstory before we kind of started linking them together. But they are starting to link together, which I think is needed for me to feel like I have some kind of idea of where the plot is heading. So I am liking this. It's definitely trying to comment on quite a lot of things. Like it's making quite a lot of social comments, not in a bad way. Like it's just interesting the kind of things it's picking up on as well and the different types of characters that we have with the different types of backgrounds so yeah I'm, I'm liking it I'm intrigued to see where it goes I am sprinting all day today from 12 it is currently 11 41 to be precise so I will be pretty much reading for the whole of the day and then hopefully this evening sitting down maybe watching a bit more of American Horror Story Coven I started a rewatch of that yesterday it's my favorite American Horror Story series started a rewatch yesterday so hopefully watching a little bit more of that today but basically reading so I'd like to try and finish this I have been listening to a bit more fairy tale this morning and we're getting more information about the fairy tale land which I'm really pleased with because I really wanted to get more of that so I might go on a walk as well at some point on one of the sprints this afternoon and listen to a bit more of that it's, it's a day of reading. It really is. So yeah, here's my progress. Oh, also the new round of Spoopathon prompts were announced and this fits so many of them. I think that one of them is like slime green or something. Like, are you kidding me? This is perfect. So I'm definitely going to be able to take quite a lot of prompts with this one. Okay, I'm going to go get ready for sprints and let you know when I have more progress on this book. Hello, I'm pretty much ready to crash. It's only like 7 p.m. but I just finished sprints. Well, finished sprints about 20, 30 minutes ago. We were live for about seven hours and I read so much, but I wanted to come in and tell you about the books that I have finished and just wrap up this vlog. So obviously I was reading Reprieve today. I started this two or three days ago, I don't know, but I have now finished this book. I knew going into this, it was not what I had expected of it. I expected this to be a very fast paced thriller with the murder in the escape room being like the pivotal big moment. That was the pivotal big moment, but there were other things leading towards it and other elements of horror being brought in by that kind of like flaw in society and the people and their actions that were causing a fear within this book as well. Because this is our patron book club pick, some of my patrons had already started this and had said that it was definitely different to what they'd expected. So I felt like knowing that going into it definitely helped my reading experience. Cause I think if I would have gone in expecting it to be really, really high stakes, fast paced thriller, I would have been disappointed because that's not what this is. It's certainly not snow, slow pacing, but it isn't like really, really tense. We follow three different narratives in this story and we are seeing their backstories to a certain extent that lead them to the point that they're in this escape room where somebody dies. We're getting fed bits of information as we get more of their narrative. So we switch between their narrative and their backstory and police interviews with some of them after the incident has happened in the escape room and also kind of 
the moments in the escape room and leading towards going through each room. I'm calling it an escape room. I don't think that's right. Does it actually say that in the blurb or have I made that up? It does say escape room. It's called a full contact haunted escape room in the blurb. I've actually started looking into this now and I'm looking at videos on YouTube because I, I've obviously heard of haunted houses but this full contact thing was really interesting to me and basically just kind of means that it's a real, like really immersive experience where people are touching you in it and stuff, which is very strange. I definitely wouldn't like that. I would think it would make me mad. <laughs> I would just be like, nope, get off me. But that is, that is the situation that these characters are in. I don't even know what I was saying now. So as one of the perspectives that we get from, we're seeing these characters in the escape room and making their way through each level of it, as well as seeing the past and the future from that moment. This book definitely does a lot. It has a lot of discussions. The author has written a really diverse array of main characters, which means that they've also been able to examine racism and prejudice and discrimination within this plot as well. We also see sexism and misogyny and homophobia in this. There is a lot mentioned in this for sure, and it really does highlight the flaws in society and how our characters are treated and affected because of that. There's just a lot more than this than I ever expected there to be, and I think that it was really interesting and a bit of a different read. And as I said, the horror element comes through definitely from this haunted house because there are horror aspects there, but the fear is coming from other angles as well as that. So I gave this one 4.5 out of 5 stars in the end, and I'm really glad that I've read it because this is one that was sat on my TBR since last year when I did my horror haul. So I read that and then I wanted to be able to pick up a graphic novel. I've been meaning to read this this month and I was saving it sp for Spoopathon obviously and wanted to see which prompts would match this. I don't think it's hitting that many of the prompts to be honest however I really wanted to read this and I think I should have read it last week because I think there was a graphic novel prompt but I didn't. But this is The Sad Ghost Club Volume 2 by Liz Meddings. This is a really lovely series it's all about mental health and finding solidarity in your mental health, health and how we all have different experiences with our mental health and how we can help each other by just being there for other people or other ghosts in this situation. It's just lovely, it's wholesome, it's reflective and it's just very thoughtful about how we all experience mental health very differently. I really liked this one, it's always a very quick read, it's a very wholesome read and I gave it four out of five stars. So I don't even know what I've read this week now as a wrap up. Did I finish The Nesting this week? Yeah. <laughs> I've also obviously been reading Fairy Tale Still by Stephen King, I have been making slow progress in that. I read a little bit more of that earlier via audiobook and I'm really liking where it's going. I'm excited to see more from it. But I think that is now everything for this video. I'm gonna go make some dinner and just crash on the sofa for the rest of the night. I don't know what I'm gonna be reading next, but in next week's video, I will let you know what that is because I will of course be doing the final week of Spoopathon as a vlog. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up, comment down below what you have been reading this week, and if you have any spooky book recommendations for me, because I have gone through these quicker than expected to. I've read 11 books so far this month, and I know I'm going to finish more before the end of the month, which will make this my most read books in one month of the year so far. So I think I was in a slump last month. <laughs> like I'm just, I'm, I'm very much out of that, which I'm grateful for. So yes, if you have any recommendations, please let me know because I would like to be able to read more books like this. I'm really enjoying reading more from the horror genre and more from the thriller genre, which are both genres I knew I enjoyed anyway, but I don't think I have as many books on my shelves to pick from in those genres as I do something like fantasy, for example. Anyway, you can also subscribe to see more of my face on your feed. You can also find my Patreon link down below where I do lots of extra content. I have lots of live shows coming up. There's going to be more readathons, 48 hour readathons, and these are available to all tiers, which I'm really excited about. You can also find a link down below to my online shop where I've created some new Lightroom presets for the autumnal season. Thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling and stay positive.